You are now watching The Lone Blown. Blown! Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back to The Lone Blown. I'm The Lone Blown, aka Zach Lesage, and today we're gonna be continuing on in my Player's Cup recap videos, basically showing you the road of what it took me to become a champion by playing in the Global Finals. In this video today, I'm actually paired against Diego Casaraga, the 2017 world champion, one of the absolute best players in the game, a player that I kind of aspire to become. I've always wanted to become a world champion ever since my brother won worlds in 2010. I mean, who does not want to be considered the best player in the game in the world? So playing against Diego, absolutely an honor. This matchup is going to feature Picaram versus ADP. I mean, Yes, it's the third time we've played this matchup in this series, but it shows you the top players are all playing very similar decks in this event. So if you're missing if you if you're missing any cards for my Picarom deck or for Diego's ADP deck, check ptcgostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5, save 5% on your next order of codes. But or you could get any cards from your collection. Whatever you're looking for, head over there pick up some codes. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We're currently on the road to a thousand subs. Let's try to get there. But I know you're not here to hear me ramble on about this. Let's jump into the gameplay right now. So this game's kind of crazy. I remember being like, at the moment I was like, I actually have to play against Diego Casaraga. And I mean, Diego, if you're watching this, I mean that with the utmost respect. You're a player who I've looked up to um, for many years and winning, winning worlds. He's a world champion, everyone. Playing in the loser's bracket basically the loser of this game is walking away with nothing in the tournament i mean beyond the accomplishment of making top 16 globally or top eight or whatever it is at this point the the tournament's just absolutely over at that point so it's crazy that i'm playing a win or lose kind of situation against a former world champion one of the best players in the entire game so here diego is taking a good look through their deck and seeing what's up. And I'm happy I get to go second. I have a Bolton start and I can get some Pokemon out. So I mean, things are looking pretty good for me here. I have no complaints at all with anything that's going on in this game at this moment. And getting an energy on an ADP and a Zacian turn one is a stellar start from Diego. So, I mean, that's huge. We know that this is going to be a, a good game. And I'm just checking through my prize cards, seeing basically what's going on. How can I properly plan this out? Making sure. That's one thing that I think I did very well in the Players' Cup is searching through my prize cards every single game, making sure I could properly come out with a game plan. But my hand here is absolutely broken. Being able to search out multiple Pokemon, um, the Mewtwo, not only the Mewtwo, the Tapu Koko. And I'm like, you want to know what? I'm not going to go ahead with the research it makes sense to just throw my opponent's hand in the blender with marnie and just hope that they don't get much going on here and i'm like if i get a crushing hammer which i do and i got heads i'm just in an absolutely fantastic space here so there you go we got the we got the bolton going for us we got the mewtwo going for us just a lot of really good things in general and here our opponent's just gonna go with their metal saucer and i mean this is not looking bad can they get an energy on the adp and an energy switch and that's really where things can be huge so there's the water energy seems like that's got to be the only energy and the fact that diego's using primate wisdom makes me think that there's not much else going on here and maybe the cherish ball is merely just to shuffle the deck up or maybe this is for a dedene gx I think it's one of those things where Diego's trying to go for that altered creation GX as soon as possible. I mean, that's what ADP does best. Um, ADP quite often gets called a terrible deck or it gets called a whatever. It's one of those things where when you have one of the best players in the game playing it, it just doesn't make sense for them. Like, it, it, it makes more sense because they can sequence very properly. And here, it's one of those things where I also don't, like, while I'm talking about this, it's weird for me that Diego's going after the energy on the active. For me, I'm using speed lightning energy to try to draw some more cards. Do I want to go Team Yelgrunt? Do I want to go Marty? I'm not sure. Because either way, I have the Tapu Koko. And here I'm like, eh, I think, I think they have seven cards in their hands. Let's go ahead and try to hit for some stuff. So I'm going to get the second energy off. And you can see 
I have access to air balloon. There's no reason not to attach the air balloon to... I mean, it's tough. I'm like, maybe I want to attach it to Raichu. Probably better to attach it to Raichu. And there's the second energy that I'm going to be able to get. So, no crushing hammer there. Unfortunate. But I am able to go into an attack this turn. And if I could stop my opponent from doing anything during their next turn, I'm just in a clear advantage at this point in the game. So, there's a Tandem Shock. Throwing it back in Diego's face. Seeing if they can get out of the active spot. Now, they do have the switch. And they do have the energy switch. But they are going to have to go for Altered Creation GX. And here I'm like, eh, you want to know what? My hand's not crazy good. And the Crushing Hammer Tails is huge. Oh, and they actually decided to forego. So that's one thing. I was expecting an altered, or I was expecting an, an altered creation GX. Diego actually went against that and decided to just go ultimate ray. I mean, I don't necessarily hate this strategy. But I'm like, yep, let's just take away the energy from the other one. Full Blitz does get the knockouts. Let's go ahead here and power up my Raichu. I can go Thunder... Or a Lightning Ride GX, which seems pretty cool. That can knock out a Zacian V. But I don't need to necessarily worry about prize cards too, too much. Because there's no Altered Creation GX on board here. So, kind of an interesting game. Um, interesting take from Diego. But I think if, if any player knows how to play ADP, it's going to be Diego. Um, beyond the questionable Crushing Hammer, which I mean, Crushing Hammer might just have been to get out of the hand. Maybe it's because I had Tapu Koko in play. Um, I mean, Diego being a world champion, I fully expect it to be some of the best high-level play possible. Here I'm just like, yep, let's just deny energies off that Zacian V on the bench. Probably not worthwhile for me to grab anything, especially since I'm not going to get the other Mewtwo. And I just want to go for the Lightning Ride GX to try to like win this game. So there's a lightning ride. I'm like, cool. I don't need too much going on here. There's a huge swing. My opponent's already played a bunch of metal saucers. Gonna send up the bulletin because I have the free retreat. I had the boss's orders for the tandem shock knock it on the Dene GX next turn. Or on the guru. My opponent not even getting the crushing hammer heads. And this is where the game's about to get really interesting. Um, Marnie, I mean, that's fine. Um, I'm not too, too worried about this hand. You can see that I have access to boss's orders, Marnie, research. Got a lot of really good things going for me. We're just vibing. Just vibing. Um, because I have access to boss orders for the win. And my opponent's small wiling. And I'm like, oh, I'm pretty happy. I have no cards in my hand for them to bring down. There's no, like, Dedenne. There's no Crobat. There's no Eldegoths. But the game's about to get super crazy here. So the Crushing Hammerheads is actually crazy huge right now. So the Crushing Hammerheads on to the Bolton V means that I can't just go Energy Switch to get a knockout here. And I'm like, okay, cool. My opponent's just kind of vibing. Diego's, like, kind of slowing down his play. There's a Metal Saucer, and I'm like, okay, maybe they're just attacking with that because it can withstand the attack. And then Diego pulls out an attack that no one ever uses here. Basically just goes for Big Eater, and I'm like, what? So at this point, I have no energies that I really can use. I'm like, do I use Electrify with Energy Switch? And you can see one thing that I also did on PTCGO, I made sure to like ask me things. It kind of gives me a second step of what I can and can't do on Pokemon. Um, you don't want to you don't want to necessarily create issues or misclick or anything like that. So that's why I enabled that for this event. For big, bigger events, I definitely recommend adding that in there. Now Diego did find the switch. I was really hoping that Diego would not find a switch at this moment. Now, Diego with three cards left in deck cannot use Intrepid Sword. And the Tool Scrapper is going to take away both of the Air Balloons. But it comes down to one of those things. How am I able to win this game? 
And I'm just like, eh, I have time to check through my discard pile. I have time to check through Diego's discard pile. Diego can eventually build up a Zacian V, maybe, depending on what Diego has left in their deck. But yeah, there's just the pass, and I'm like, okay, cool. There's Quick Ball, Quick Ball, Eldegoss, and I double check for boss, and that is game because I could just bring it up. I mean, you got to top deck something at some point, especially when you have limited cards in deck, and Diego had a bit of a weird start. So jumping into game two, I'm super happy that I'm up 1 0 against. Diego Casaraga, the former world champion from Argentina. And this hand's kind of a yikes, but that's okay. Diego's going first. I'm going second. Maybe I'll be able to top deck out of this or get something really good going on. So Diego with the ADP in the active spots and the metal energy. Not too much else that you could really ask for beyond getting a Zacian V. Just to use Intrepid, draw some more cards. So to me, this is looking like an absolute stellar start from Diego. There's really not much else to do. The Crobat's in the Scarf Pile, so I'll definitely take that. I'll definitely take that there's a reset stamp there. I'm like, oh, you want to know what? Okay, let's start off with Crushing Hammer. I mean, there's no reason for me not to play Crushing Hammer. Um, I want to just slow down the ADP. I know that that's my game plan. I'm like, okay, let's grab a Bolt, and I need to power up some Pokemon. Just double-checking through my prize cards again. Remember to do that every single game. It matters so much. There's so many times you're playing and you're just like, oh, cool, I have this many energies prized. Or, cool, that Eldegoss late game is not going to be, it doesn't exist. So, I'm just going to try to draw into some cards. And I'm like, okay, I got access to Quick Ball. I could probably get something else out here. Probably just want to discard the Lightning Energy to get things in play for the Tapu Koko. And there's a Research. So, I got the Air Balloon. I'm kind of chilling. My hand's a little bit on the dead side, but I mean, it's whatever. I get, I got off a turn one Electrify and ripped Diego's energy out of play. So that's, that's a pretty ideal turn for Peak. Again, my hand's a little bit on the dead side. There's the Crushing Hammer again, and Diego correctly choosing the Mewtwo Mew this game. So probably learning from last game that taking it off the Bolton doesn't necessarily matter because I'm probably not attacking with Bolt Storm too much. Um, it's really, you got to watch out for that tandem shock. Because not only do you have to find the energy switch and the energies, try to get off that altered creation, you have to find a way to get out of the active spot. So finding a switch. So that's really what Pikaram does very well against ADP. It just really throws a bunch of like obstacles to get over. And at some point, the decks, the ADP deck can miss. So going through with the Mawile. Diego's going to rip the Pika Rom out of there. I'm just like, rip. You can see uh, see how my hand's kind of a little bit gross. And there's the Marnie. Diego just Marnies me out of nowhere. I don't know why. Um, gives me an amazing hand. I have no complaints with this at all. But does find a way to get off the turn to Altered Creation. Everything's going super well. For Diego here. So I'm like, how can I make this the best? Well, let's start off with getting a heads off altered. I'm like, let's grab some cards out of my deck, thin out that other Picarom. Let's get this Tapu Coco, get those energies that Diego discarded in play. And I'm like, ah, uh, where do I want to attach those energies? I might as well just go switch there. Maybe I can attack with the Boltons. And we got access to... I'm like, where do I want to attach my energies? Yeah, nothing nothing crazy going on there. I probably should have attached to the Raichu, if anything. Crushing Hammer is not going to do too much. I'm like, uh, do I want to attack with Boltons? What do I want to do here? Might as well attack with the Peak at this point, if I get the opportunity to. Or attack with the Boltons. And I'm just like, I have energy in play. Let's go for it. It's a bit of a weird game. I think I should have actually, instead of playing the Speed Lightning on the Picarum, I probably should have gone Speed Lightning on the Mewtwo or just gone Normal Lightning on the Mewtwo. I think that would have been a little bit better of a play. The extra two cards probably aren't going to matter here. And it makes me a little bit more of a target for Marnie. But sometimes you go all in and hope that your opponent just goes in with it. Crushing Hammer Tails definitely keeping me in this game. And Diego is putting a card on top of their deck and rips the research. Just like, I mean, you know Guru's busted when, right? 
So there's the metal saucer. There's some good things going on for our opponents. And there's the altered creation. So I mean, I'm I'm kind of safe here for another turn. I'm just like, okay, you wanna what? Let's see exactly how this is gonna go. Might as well get the the Vicavolt V out of my hands or out of my deck. I just don't see it being um, great. Um, when I say get out of my, getting it out of my deck, I'm just going to put it at the bottom with Marnie because I'd rather draw into other things. Like, yeah, you want to what? I can get the knockout with Bolton, but I could also get the knockout with Full Blitz. Um, and Full Blitz is probably going to be huge. I could just start getting powered up with my other Mewtwo Mew. Um, the other Mewtwo Mew is going to allow me to attack with Lightning Ride GX. So that could be huge. So, first... First three prize cards. Diego's used a handful of metal saucers this game. I do remember that as well. And it's really one of those things. What's going to go on here? Is my opponent going to be able to take the knockouts? Are they going to be able to get set up with another um, Zation? I'm just going through here. So there's the one metal saucer. There's another energy. My opponent's going tool scrapper. To me, that's completely fine. There's a metal saucer. I'm like, oh, I don't want to see that card. Going cherish ball, going through their deck. So for me, this is this is this is kind of a do or die situation. How will I be able to win this game? So there's that, and I'm like, my opponent has a lot of cards in their hand. Maybe I Marnie here? Maybe it's worthwhile for me to go Electromagnetic Radar, get some of these cards into my deck. But those are kind of important cards. Let's just go ahead and Marnie, see what's up. At this point, I'm like, nothing matters. Let's see if I can get a Crushing Hammer. Just kind of stop my opponents. Tails, that would have been huge there. And I'm like, okay, hopefully my opponent does not have Energy, Metal Saucer, boss um and that's a lot to ask for considering that diego's played down a lot of resources this game so i'm like actually you want to what they're locked they're locked out of the game will they find a switch and a boss um especially based off of the prize cards so no no, no lightning ride gx i kind of changed it up in the heat of the moment you can see there there's the energy my opponent cannot play down any bench pokemon there's a Primate Wisdom. And there's a Marnie taking away the boss's orders from my hands. Because I'm just going to try to draw all my prize cards at once here. Um, by using Tag Bolt GX to knock out two Pokemon at once. And Diego's just going to retreat. There's the Metal Saucer. I'm like, does Diego have this? And... Diego knows by retreating kind of stops it. So I'm just like, okay, cool. I have every card available in my deck, but I top deck the Eldegoss before it. I could have got it off the Dene GX. And here's the Tag Bolt GX to draw four prize cards. Well, I'm actually going to draw three prize cards because I'm going to knock out the Guru. Guru has less HP, but we are able to take this game. And what a series that was. Diego using Big Eater GX game one with some excellent gameplay there, thinking on his feet on whatever he could do, even when times were getting tough. I mean, I think the games were really, they went well on my side, um, which is super cool. I mean, I'm like, it sounds crazy to be like, I'll, I know a lot of you will look up to me as a top player or something like that. Um, but for me beating Diego, I'm just like, wow, Diego is such a strong player. And for me, it's one of those rematch games. I played Diego in San Diego, of all places, at a regional championships. I was having a really poor mental health day. And I feel like I threw against Diego in an otherwise favorable matchup. So just getting a little bit more of a revenge game um, where we tied there, being able to win this time for me is like validating that I am the player that I want to be and I'm on a path of growth. Um, maybe I'm looking too much into it, but either way, um, super, super cool to play against Diego in a tournament like this. He played super well. Um, so, I mean, we'll see. We're, we're still in the tournament, right? I mean, we know, we've know we known the results for over a month at the time of the creation of this video that I've been able to win the Players' Cup to. 
but it's I think it's cool to just kind of go past, check out the recap, show some of the gameplay, and even show where I point out some of my mistakes, point out some cool plays that my opponents made, and just kind of re-enjoy the ride. But that's all we got going on for today. Again, hit that subscribe if you haven't already. We're on our road to a thousand. Let's get there, everyone. We can do it. Um, that being said, I got to peace out. I'm going to make some more content for all of y'all real soon. So stay tuned on the channel. Have a great night and peace out. Really hope that you enjoyed watching that video. I totally enjoyed making it. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like the video, share the video with everyone that you know, and subscribe to the channel as well. Totally appreciate all the support. We got a lot of cool things happening on the channel, so stay tuned for more. Be sure to check out the social links in the description. Thanks and have yourself a great one.